Good afternoon. Uh, we're back again uh, just to see one of our projects that we are doing here in Ogun State. Um, of course, we have a few things we are doing here, so we felt it's necessary to show you around. So this is going to be a snow concrete pen, uh, but as you can see, the work is still ongoing. We're about try we're trying to roof the structure before we do the groundwork. It was already cleared and leveled, but uh, left for some time, so the vegetation has taken off again because of the rains. So now we're about to do the roofing. So once it is roofed, once it is roofed, we're going to clear the inside and cast the floor. Then we we'll do the concrete pens. So yeah, that's what we have going here. Then uh, these are some pens. So we have uh, two very massive earthen ponds here and about one, two, three, four smaller ponds. So we're going to walk you through them. Uh, these are going to be for catfish farming. So this is one of these. The ponds were already dug before uh, we were called into the project. Uh, apparently, they've not been stocked at all since they dug the ponds because after the digging, uh, things didn't really kick start. So uh, our job here is to uh, treat the ponds, get the vegetation cleared out, prepare it for fish culture. So that's one of the things we are going to be handling here. And then we are also doing a goat farm. So this is going to be our goat tree. We are doing an elevated system for the goats. So the whole idea is for the goats to be able to roam around the ponds. You can see there's a lot of vegetation growing. Uh, grass is growing around the ponds. This is because there's no uh, livestock keeping them in check. So instead of having to hire people to come here to clear this vegetation occasionally, we can have goats running around this place and uh, keeping the vegetation in check. And also the droppings from the goats on the dikes of the pond, when it rains, the rain will wash it into the pond and will serve as a uh, fertilizer to the fish pond, which will also help the growth of the fishes. So it's a win-win situation. What we are trying to do with the goods here is to create a symbiotic relationship that the goods will benefit from the grasses around the dike of the ponds and the fishes will benefit from the fertilizer that the droppings of the goods will provide for the water. So that's how it is done. So you can see this is the structure. Of course, the beam is raised and this is going to be the baseline. So we're going to have an entrance from this front that will be slanted so the goats can climb into the structure and remain on top. So the base of it will use wood to do a slab with some little holes that once the goats pee or drop their waste, the, the droppings of the goats are in form of pellets. So it can easily be swept down from the uh, little holes in between the woods that will form the base for the goats. So this is how we're going to des design this. So while they are inside there and they drop their waste, it will come right down to the ground. And of course, the rain, when it falls from the ground, is either they are packed or it will be washed into the pond. And occasionally, they will be allowed to roam about. So we'll have one door at this extreme and another at the other extreme. And what we are going to practice here is uh, we want to try what we call natural synchronization. Uh, synchronization has to do with bringing all the animals on the farm on heat the same period. So we're going to demarcate it into two. We'll have the males on a session and the females on a session. And after two to three months, we're going to release them for a period of two to three months to cohabit together and which time the males would have detected the heat from the females and impregnated all of them within the space of two to three months. Then we'll separate them again so that the animals will give birth almost at the same time. So that's what we're going to do, a natural means of synchronizing the animals. Usually synchronization is carried out with hormones in animals, but we want to naturally synchronize them by uh, mating the animals at a particular interval and separating them. And after the uh, 
uh, kidding, we'll have to restart the whole process again. So that's what we're going to do. And this is also done to target the dry season. So when you synchronize them, uh, you target it in a way that the animals will give birth towards the dry season because uh, uh, goats have a gestation period of 150 days, that is five months. So we are going to synchronize them in a way that when we breed them, the, giving, the period where they give birth will fall into the dry season because there are less prevalence of disease during the dry season compared to the rainy season. The rainy season because of the rains, the wetness and everything, it breeds some form of disease. But during the dry season, uh, diseases on the field or the pasture are way lesser than the rainy season. So this is also one of the reasons why we are synchronizing them. So that we can breed them during a period that the gestation will lapse into the dry period. So the animals can give birth when it is dry for the young ones to be sustained. So that's what we will do. So uh, it's actually going to be like a T. This line is going to be for the breeders, the parent stock. While we'll have a smaller line that will come in like this. Maybe if you just come here, you will see. You can see uh, the rods that we are, we are going to use to form the pillars. So this one will go like this. That's where we'll have the young goats that's after winning them from the parents who we'll transfer them into this so there's going to be a door a partition between the breeder house and the uh, the side for the winners so that's how it's designed and of course we have other ponds here you can see one two three four ponds so in between the dikes of the ponds the goats will be allowed to roam around to graze and browse then uh the droppings of course like we said will be washed into the um ponds and also there will be provisional feed for them inside the uh, uh, structure so when the animals have been taken into the structure there is going to be uh, feeders inside the structure where the animals can also feed from probably a or silage will be provided and also concentrates especially for the nursing mothers so that's how we're going to design this. It's going to be really interesting. So I would like you to follow this until the end. Uh, of course, we're going to make another video when the whole setup is complete. But we like to show you when we're doing these constructions. So you have a clear understanding of what we're doing. So we'll come back to that. Next is the uh, fish hatchery. We're going to take you to the fish hatchery. We have a grass cutter farm too that we'll show you. So we are doing quite a few things here. So these are the concrete, uh, sorry, the ethan ponds. Uh, the other two that we showed you are the larger ones that we have some smaller ones here. Okay, so uh, we are at the concrete ponds and archery session. So to my right are concrete ponds. You can see this is the water inlet and this is the outlet. So this pipe takes it down to the bigger ponds. That's how it's designed. So you can see these ones will take each take 1,000 fishes, but they are not designed for uh, carrying grow out operation. They are designed for um, uh, the uh, juveniles. Yeah, the juveniles. So these are our hatchery tanks. These are the hatchery tanks. So this is where we're going to be doing the hatching of the fingerlings. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12 archery tanks. So we'll do the spawning here. Once we finish the hashing process, we nurse the fries here for a couple of weeks. Then we transfer them to these other ponds. So they are more or less holding tanks. So we hold them here until the fishes get to juvenile and jumbo stage. Then we move them to the eating ponds. So when they go to the eating ponds, they've already attained that stage where they no longer feast on themselves. Because with catfish, we all know there's huge amount of cannibalism. So if you don't sort the fishes according to their sizes and allow them to attain at least a sizable uh, 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 size, if they are, they are not big enough before you introduce them to the eating pond, then there's problem. Because in the eating pond, it is very difficult for you to sort because it is muddy. For you to sort, you have to drain the entire water and pick out every single fish from the mud in order to sort the sizes. So that's why you must have holding tanks 
we call these holding tanks and these are, these are the hatchery tanks so once we finish the hashing here we not stem from fry to finger length stage then we'll move them here so when we move them here they will remain here till they get to post finger length to juveniles and post juvenile stage or uh, jumbo stage so at that time they are almost about this size so when they are this size we we'll select them in equal sizes and introduce them to the eating pond so that's where you will get exactly the number of fishes you introduce there or at least 90 percent of the fishes you introduce on the eggs because if you don't do that you introduce them at finger lengths post finger lengths or even juvenile stage you will still have huge amount of losses due to cannibalism so that is why this our uh, holding tanks become very important because we need to use them to do the process of the sorting to various sizes before we move them to the head. So while we do that, once we move everything to the head, we can still spawn and decide to sell fingerlings to other farmers and also retain the ones that optics will not take immediately. So that's the way it is designed. So you can see this is uh, a metal archery tank. We are going to use uh, a roofing match and some uh, different types of tarpaulin to seal it up completely and bring in electricity here to create some level of heat in order to extend the hatching process of the fishes. So we are still a work in progress here as well. We are not done. So uh, we are taking you from the uh, snail concrete fence structure which is the one at the extreme. Uh, to the fish ponds, the eating ponds, to the goat farm, and now we are at the archery unit and with the holding tanks. So from here we'll take you to the grass cutter farm. Those are the things we have here, grass cutters, uh, fish farm, uh, goats and snow is what we have here. We're going to be doing some greenhouses for that will come in later, which will be done outside the, uh, the premises. I'm going to show you the space we use for that. So this is what we have. So you can see the hatchery tanks, when we want to let out the water, we'll have to use a strainer to tie on this completely. A very that type that they used to see um, uh, maize when you want to do uh, pap with maize. You grind the maize, there's a sieve that you place it on to filter it. So that's the strainer we're going to use on this and tie it to this point. So when you're releasing the water, the fries don't go out with it. So that's what we do. Then of course we'll have our caca bands, our preparation for the spawning and all of those things. We're going to make another video for it. So that's why you need to subscribe and keep following us because there are great contents we're going to bring your way. And of course, don't forget to like and share our videos. So next we're going to take you to the grass cutter part. Uh, what we're doing there will show you when we get to the grass cutter part. All right, so uh, this is the door to the grass cutter house. And the whole of this open land is still part of my client's property. So we're going to be having a poultry farm here. What's 10,000 broilers, 10,000 layers. And we're going to be having at least three greenhouses for the snow concrete pens we are constructing inside. And we're going to be having at least about 100 to 150,000 capacity fish farm uh, on 18 ponds at the extreme end because it's really marshy at that end of the land so uh, that's what we're going to do here so we are just facing the phase one this is the phase one of the project and uh, the phase two will come in when we come outside so the phase one is uh is already enclosed it's fenced and uh, that's what we're doing so if you look closely now you would see that this is the passage this is the wall to the uh internal parts of the property is actually just a fence so instead of wasting the whole of this space we deemed it necessary to use it for grass cutter farming so if you come to this side you will see we have windows on the side so these windows are to allow ventilation we're going to create uh, some block systems that will have holes we use fancy blocks to close these windows. We're not really going to put uh, windows like slide or all of that. So they are still going to be blocks, but it's going to be the fancy type that has holes. So here that is this to the building. Then there's also some form of darkness because grass waters of course are nocturnal animals. They are very So this is the door. So what we plan to do is 
to have the cages by the wall. So we might decide to use either the high on cages, we have not concluded on that, or we use the concrete deckings. So we have three steps of concrete decks to this wall. So while you move along like this, you can easily attend to the animals. So this is the beginning phase of it. We are going to show you the video when we are done with that. So it's either we're using the cages. If we're using the cages, we install them and they'll just be standing and facing this side. But if we're going to use the deckings, which will be the concrete system of grass cutter housing and steps, we'll have step one, step two, step three. So the attendants will just open, attend to the animals. Of course, there's a passage between two, um, two pens. So you open this, you clean, you close it, you chase them back this way, you open and clean. If you follow me on grass cutter farming, you will see uh, some of my designs on the YouTube channel. So if you're a subscriber, uh, you would see them, please. If you're not, don't forget to subscribe before the end of this video because you want to see those videos, trust me. So that's how it's designed. So you can see um, there's a lot of ventilation here. There's a lot of hair flow into this place. That's to make it uh, really comfortable for the animals. It's quite dark, but it's also quite unique because what you need is ample amount of ventilation and you keep uh, the, the, the environment cool for the animals and the tribe perfectly. So the whole of this wall, we're gonna be having grass cutters all the way down to the extreme of the building. So we decided to cut it at some point because we have a side gate into this building so at the extreme end towards that gate we decided to hang it and start another structure on the other side so we are almost there so you can get out of this part you don't need to go back to the entrance so you can see this is the side gate to the building if you open this now you will see directly the fish ponds that we showed you earlier inside the yard so that's why we had to give this clearance then so you can even come out from here and attend to your animals then we have the other one so you can see how it is designed uh, the flooring has started from the extreme end and uh, of course we're going to roof it down this way for the water to flow out so that's how it's designed you can see the whole of it so there's no need for us to go to the extreme end and uh, of course we're going to come back with another video please like subscribe and share and of course the my united chelsea and liverpool fans don't worry don't be upset okay <laughs> Uh, I have not decided to make the Arsenal just a new uniform. It's just that I was wearing this and I made the other videos. Those videos were made the same day. And I'm still going to make another video today with this same shirt. So please look beyond the jersey. Of course, I'm always a gunner. A gunner, once a gunner, is always a gunner. Alright, so thank you. And uh, don't forget to call. The number is plus two three four eight zero six eight five two five zero. God bless you and bye-bye.